I am Lynn Canavan, and I am the Program Director for the Industrial Internet Consortium, and I'm really delighted to see you this afternoon. This actually marks our first appearance in Europe. We have uh, many members from Europe, but this is the first time that we've actually publicly spoken uh, in, in a forum, so we're really delighted to be here today. Um, I wanted to take a minute to introduce um, the agenda and also to let you know that at the end, we will open it up for question and answer, but we do have um, many speakers um, with very interesting things to say. So in order to get through the whole program, we'll ask each of them to speak, and then we will have a panel discussion, and we will open it up for questions from you for that panel. Okay? So with that said, um, I, again, I am the program director for the Industrial Internet Consortium, so I will um, give you a brief overview of our consortium and also the reason it was formed, where we are today, the business uh, justification for why we were formed and so forth. Um, my distinct pleasure to, uh, to uh, have uh, Benoit Lambois from um, AT&T. He is, um, he, AT&T is one of our founding members and he will be speaking as well as um, Wally Nigram from Accenture, Keith Steele from Prism Tech and Lee Wright from um, YCon. So these are all members that represent us on a global level as well as a European level. We all have different things to say. Um, we also, uh, did um, expect to have uh, one of our speakers was from Bosch, but uh, he had difficulty with the travel delays. So he will not be here today, um, but he is, uh, uh, Bosch is quite active on our membership as well. So apologies for the change in agenda. Okay, so with that being said, um, wanted to start with a little bit of the reason why, um, what, the, what the rationale is for the industrial internet. Um, basically, we believe that there are three revolutions and we are in the middle of the third revolution. Um, you know, 150 years ago, there was the industrial revolution where the, the machines started to become automated and factories uh, started to form and it really transformed the world with newfound productivity. And that was real basic machines that were basically basically um, uh, machines shifting the, from, from human power to machine power. That was the first revolution. Uh, and then about 20, 25 years ago, we had the internet revolution. And that was when computer, you know, distributed computing power uh, connected to the internet and made information um, more available. Again, that was the second wave that we saw. And now what we see is the third link that we, we consider the industrial Internet, and that's basically where you have machines um, that really to date have not been connected, that are starting to become connected to give us much better um, information and to be able to be used in a much more powerful way that will also transform industry as we have not seen since those previous two revolutions. Um, the industrial internet, if you look at it, um, there's a lot of um, data out there. Um, I know that Accenture just released um, a report on this as well. But basically, you know, um, it's believed to um, impact about 46% of the gross domestic product. This is, it's going to be huge. Um, we think it's a 30 two trillion dollar opportunity. Um, any way you slice it, it's big. Again, Accenture just came out with some data that um, I think Waleed might be touching on a little bit um, and you can reference their report as well. But there, it's, it's, it's a multi-trillion dollar opportunity and that's one of the reasons why we, uh, we are formed to, to help um, companies take advantage of that. Um, I wanted to just show you uh, something very quickly that in, in 1976, um, Kodak was a camera company. Um, they introduced their first uh, computerized camera. It weighed four pounds um, and it cost 10,000 US dollars and it really had a very, as you can see, it was 0.01 megapixels. I think every cell phone in the room, you know, absolutely dwarfs that computing power. So as you can see, the technology um, curve has certainly, you know, technology um, continues to accelerate and this is just one example of, of what that's like. So what are the roadblocks to growth? Um, so right now there's a lot of different organizations that are looking to capitalize on this opportunity that's in front of us. Again, it's a th if we think it's a $32 trillion opportunity, there are governments worldwide who are looking at this. There are industries that know that they can revolutionize their factories, their customer base, and so forth. Um, you've got the opportunity of big data. What do you do with that data? 
How is it going to be secured? How is it going to be made private? Those are big issues. Um, a lot of academics, universities on a global level are looking at this. Um, manufacturing, their standards organizations, and there are the technologies themselves. Which technologies are going to work here? Um, and right now, to date, many of these are um, uh, many of these organizations are working uh, with with one-off types of relationships. They're working, you know, the the government is talking to some of the academics who are talking to some of the industry. Um, some of the uh, standards organizations are working with some of the technologies, but it's really been a very um, defragmented type of an initiative. So that is really the reason why the Industrial Internet Consortium was launched, is to centralize this and bring it all together so that we can streamline this, make it much more efficient and effective for these companies to work together. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Industrial Internet Consortium. And again, I, I only have a few brief remarks, and then I'm going to turn it over to our members who are going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, but basically, we launched um, less than six months ago. So actually, on Saturday, that will mark our six-month six anniversary. So we are still five months and counting. Uh, we now have 80 two members, um, and they are represented up here. And we are founded by AT&T, who is with us today, Cisco, General Electric, Intel, and IBM. And from that, so in March, we had five companies. And, and today, again, we, we have 82. So companies, um, and that's on a global basis. About 9% of our members are in Europe. And about 9% of them are in Asia. Um, so we are, we, uh, a lot of them are in North America, but we are a global organization and we do see a lot of growth coming from Europe and from Asia as well as uh, South America. Okay, so I'm going to just tell you a little bit about it. Um, again, our purpose, the reason we were formed, is really to help um, centralize all of those activities, accelerate that um, in order to um, enable innovation for, for companies, for the government, for the world. Um, the IIC, the we call it the IIC, uh, Industrial Internet Consortium is a lot of syllables, so we, we tend to call ourselves the IIC. We are an open organization, which means that membership is open to anyone who wants to join us. We are global. And we are also a nonprofit organization. So we don't make money. And the, the membership fees we take in is turned into programs for the members and enabling uh, the members to help get some of this innovation going. Um, and we are also governed by our steering committee. And I'll talk a little bit about that so you understand how it is when we make a decision, when we publish, and so forth. All of that does go through the steering committee. They don't do everything, but they, they do look at everything before it does go out. Um, the other thing about the uh, the Industrial Internet Consortium is we are not a standards organization. We get asked this question a lot, and I know when we have um, when new members come in and we talk to our new members, they say, "When are we going to work on standards?" We don't. Um, that is um, our belief, and the belief of our founders is that there are a lot of organizations out there that do create standards, but it is our our mission to understand what the standards should be, and then ask one of those standards organizations to go develop it for us. So again, we look at standards, we do evaluate, and we organize those existing standards to see if they will work for the work that needs to be done for the industrial internet. Um, but um, if, and if they don't, if there isn't a standard, if there is a standard out there that works, that's great, and we will use it. If there isn't, we will ask organizations, we will give them the specifications and ask them to go develop it. Okay, so um, we have three main areas that we work on. And one is on innovation, and that is around the test beds. So that is, again, enabling um, the new products, the processes, the new services that are to come. And this is where our members team together to create and enable these new test beds, which is the innovation. I think it's fair to say that most companies do join us um, to, to, ma to make money for their organizations. We just did a survey of our members, and 100% um, of them said that they joined. Uh, their reason for their interest in this area is to make money is for new products, new services, new innovation to come out of this. Um, technology and security is a second big focus. So how, do, how are these new products going to happen? What are those architectural frameworks? What are, um, things have to be interoperable. If you go back to that 
chart that I had that showed everyone working in all different ways, um, we don't want that to happen. We want to establish some interoperability to enable um, innovation to come together in a much faster way. We also take security very seriously. Um, if, you know, if what comes out of this is not secure, if data is not, um, you know, if, if data is ne not kept private, um, this will not work. Security is hugely important to us. We have a special team that only thinks about security. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the third part of what we do is around community. So again, it's getting the organizations that may not have had conversation before together to talk about things. Um, we are coming off of this. Um, today is Monday. Last week, we had our second quarterly members meeting that took place in uh, Austin, Texas. Uh, we had about 160 individuals come to that meeting. And that, um, the again, with that community. So they worked on small teams and large teams to understand, understand some, to work through some use cases, to work through some framework discussion, to talk about vocabulary, which is very important. As um, some of you may know, if, um, if I call something a widget and you call it a component and someone else calls it something else, we'll never get to a basic understanding. So we, we have different work streams that seem, um, you know, that, that help to make sure it all works together. So again, the community aspect of what we do is one of our, um, one of, is very important to us. Um, and it, Outside of that also is some of the thought leadership. You'll be seeing some published material from us uh, in that area as well. So just a quick um, insight into how we're organized. We do have a steering committee. Um, off to the side, you see staff. So I am a staff member. I'm the program director for the IIC. I work very closely with the steering committee. I also look, work very closely with our members. Um, and um, we do have certain, uh, we have um, six working groups that report directly to the steering committee. That means that um, the work that is done within those, those um, groups are reviewed by the steering committee. And again, before we publish, they um, are looked at and um, voted on by the steering committee in order to progress them, release them, or send them back. Um, so we have a legal working group, which basically um, makes sure that what we do is um, is is legal and within the law that our policy and procedures and uh, intellectual capital um, and property rights are respected and so forth. So the legal team works on that. We have a marketing working group, which helps us with thought leadership materials, communications, and so forth. Uh, we, ha we, we have a membership group. Um, and then we have a security working group, again, for the security issues. We have a technology working group, some subgroups um, out of that, and some and the test bed working group. Those are the primary groups, and underneath them are some, not all, of the different spin out groups that are focusing on what, we, what it is that we are doing. Um, I wanted to give you a quick snapshot into one of the groups, which is our technology working group. So each of the groups that I mentioned does have a similar um, work that's going on, it's similar but different, according to what their charter is. This is the charter of what our technology working group is. And this was voted on by the steering committee. Um, you know, we, we actually have a security charter uh, that was just approved, and that was actually sent back several times. Again, you know, um, the, the uh, steering committee takes very seriously what the charter is, what these groups should be doing. Um, so what we have done, we've constructed the charter, um, we have defined the deliverables, so we now we have a frameworks team, and that frameworks team will be publishing a white paper um, it, shortly, uh, I say shortly, within the next several months, uh, you will see a white paper come out with a recommended, recommended uh, framework. Feeding that framework are all the use cases. We have a lot of use cases in development and many more spinning up because we want to make sure that what we decide, what we establish, can be proven in a number of different scenarios. So the use case team is helping us to prove what that framework should be. Um, we have a data management and an analytics team that works on those issues. And again, we have the vocabulary team. So there's a number of different teams that are out there uh, that meet on a weekly basis. Again, we are not yet six months old, but we um, are progressing quite rapidly in some areas. Some things are taking us a little bit longer, and some things are taking us a lot longer. Um, but we do meet, um, w these groups do meet. Um, I know the frameworks team actually meets twice a week. Some of the use case team meets twice to three times a week as well. So we're global, um, but we do have people call into um, WebEx conference calls to get the work done. And then on a quarterly basis, we meet in person. Um, 
so into the, you know, again, what, what the different groups are doing specifically. So um, the frameworks team is working on the technology landscape, again, with a white paper as the deliverable. The use case team is, is again, completing its inventory. So they're, they're um, building a library of the different scenarios for use cases. There's one on, an, um, on the manufacturing, the, the factory floor. There's some on networking. There's different scenarios just to make sure that the architecture will be proven out. The data management uh, team is going to be focusing on actual industry uh, projects and the vocabulary team again is getting us to that base understanding of what it is that we're talking about so that we're all on the same page when we understand and reference something. Um, I also wanted to talk just a little bit about test beds because that really is where we believe um, a lot of the um, benefit is from the industrial internet is that innovation, the new products, the new processes, the services, and so forth. Um, so we're, we're right now we are looking at um, identifying partners, looking at uh, proposals for this, looking at sources for funding um, with governments across the world, um, and also looking um, on how we're going to publicize and these test beds as they come out to maximize the reuse and so forth. So test beds is a focus. Um, that is something every test bed that we have has to be approved by our steering committee. So we want to make sure that they are meaningful, purposeful, and that they do address the industrial internet, that we don't just create them and then say, eh, we're not that interested. We're going to drop this one. Every one of them is reviewed rigorously before it is approved and, uh, and brought forward. Um, okay, and I just wanted to end with this before I turn it over to Benoit. We, um, so um, it's really it's all about the innovation. So in 1953, um, Isaac um, Ashmove published a story about a car that could drive itself. It had its own personality and so forth. Um, so um, in August, um, Raj Makumar, who is the director um, at Carnegie Mellon University, he drove members of the U.S. Congress around Washington, D.C. in an autonomous autonomous vehicle. Um, so um, again, so so basically the future has come to bear and Raj was at our meeting last week and he was talking to our members about autonomous vehicles and the, and what's possible there to now too. So um, again, that innovation is here and with the Industrial Internet Consortium, um, our members are helping to drive that innovation and we welcome participation from you in the audience and we will take questions uh, a little bit later. So with that, um, I do need to switch the slides, but as I do, I'm going to just turn it over to Benoit. And, and actually, let me let me introduce you, and then I'll I'll switch the slides. Um, so, um, AT and T, as you saw on the slides, they are a founding member of the organization. So this concept came out of five companies getting together, AT&T being one of them. Um, really delighted to ha um, have um, Benoit Lamo, who is the as Associate Director of the Global Machine to Machine Product Management Group at AT&T. And there he focuses on global product management for M2M, focusing on vertical manufacturing and the development of the M2M, M2X portfolio for AT&T on a global basis. 